I'm going to pray before we get started that I won't cry. Um, I haven't spoken in front of everybody before. I've only done Sunday school, so y'all bear with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity just for the time we're here together. I do pray now, Lord, that you would just calm me, help me not to get excited and go 50 miles an hour, that you would just speak to me and through me, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to the message you want us to get out of us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm done. That's it. All right. (laughs) Our passage today is Luke 4, 1 through 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, so any of you that's ever been in my classes, you know that um, when Pete said, can you speak on this day? I was like, sure, and he said on probation. I thought, what's probation got to do with Jesus being in the wilderness? So, you know what I did? I looked up the word. So I do have a definition for you. The, the word probation comes from the Latin word probatio, which means to prove or to test. One of the definitions was the release of an offender from detention subject to a period of good behavior under supervision. Okay, and we all know that this was not the ca- this case for Jesus. Um, but for us, in just thinking about it, it could be some of those times in our life when we are in intentional sin, right? Um, we're being very convicted, but we don't really want to do anything about it. So maybe during this time of Lent, we could use this time to reflect to repent, and to just use God to give us redirection and for strength, maybe to get through those consequences that we've had because of the things that we've done. Okay, the next one that we're going to focus on, the next definition is the process or period of testing or observing the character or abilities of a person in a certain role, as in a new employee, Or, I love this one, to find the metal of one's resolve. I love that one. Of course, I had to look up all those words, too. So, in other words, if you're like me and need clarification, the quality of someone's character and the courage and ability to do something well in difficult circumstances despite adversities. That's a whole lot. Okay, and I have an example. My son, as you know, Josh went to Coastal Carolina, Um, he started working for Enterprise when he got out of college. So he's been there a year and a half, two years. Started as an MT, which is management training. And I mean, it was grueling. He worked every hour around the clock, midnight to seven, two to eight, whatever. And he had to go to the airport for six months just in order to move up to the next level. So then it was a management assistant And then he got to be the branch manager assistant, okay? So he's learning this whole time, um, kind of a period of probation, right? He's learning this whole time. He was waiting to get a branch to open so he could move up. In the meantime, as a lot of you know, his, we'll call her his fiance, um, moved to Miami to go to medical school. That was back in August. Well, as of January, they decided, you know, that they just couldn't stand to be apart anymore. So he ask Enterprise to transfer him to Miami. Well, guess what? He can't transfer in the same position that he's in here because it's in another state. So, in other words, he got demoted all the way back to MT. (coughs) And I have to tell you something. Where's Miss Sandra? Anyway, I know she was here. There you are. Sandra caused these God winks. So I'm going to use that. The girl that was head of HR here in Indian Land was in Miami before she came here. So she pretty much made a call, said, hey, I got this guy. He's a man of integrity. He knows what he's doing. He's here every day. He works hard. And they were like, well, you know, we, we'll take your word for it, but he's still going to have to go through his 90-day probation. So they bumped him back to um, management trainee, so he started all over again. But once he got down there, Josh knows his stuff. Yes, he has to go through the probation period 
learning how they do things in Florida, but he was like second in the region his second week down there. So, but still, another guy winked Sandra, the guy that was over him at the airport, is now regional man manager in Miami. So he said, I'm gonna promote you as soon as I can, but we still have to go through that 90 days, okay? So sometimes we have to go through periods um, where we're learning, we're learning different things, we're learning how maybe things have changed, we're getting better, we're getting stronger. We have to prove ourselves. And at the end of that 90 days, we start seeing the benefits, we start seeing the bigger pay, or as, as in a Christian's life, we start being more fruitful and other people see the benefits of our walk, right? Okay, so getting back to Jesus in the wilderness, notice where he came from. He had just been baptized. As Pete would say, the Holy Spirit had done a dive bomb on him, right? And God had said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So in other words, the other two parts of the Trinity had already said, this is, this is him. This is my son. This is who you've been waiting for, right? Um, but the Holy Spirit... Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, led him into the wilderness. It was not like he wandered into the wilderness. This was on, on purpose, with a purpose. Um, I know we've talked about before in the um, sermons how the wilderness was a place where people met God, right? We talked about Abraham and Moses, Isaiah, Elijah, David. God speaks to people where there's no distractions, okay? And he takes care of them in the wilderness, Okay, Jesus knew that he knew that if you go to a quiet place, you're going to meet God. And notice in the Bible that Jesus goes to these quiet places right often to pray and be alone with his Father. But even in the wilderness, he knew that being tempted, he was going to get strength, safety, and provision from his Father, as we do. Okay, what was the purpose on him being in, I studied this, y'all, it was, I've got all kind of commentaries too, but um, Pete says, I, you know, I said, oh, I had 30 minutes. He was like, no, the whole thing's 30 minutes. So I had to really cut this down. So um, I was hoping I'd get nervous and talk fast and get through the eight pages, but I'm not going to. Okay, so the first thing I think was humanity. Jesus was proving to us, he's human. He's just like we are, okay? The first thing Satan did, if you'll notice, was try to put doubt like he does in our minds. If you are the son of God, let me see you turn that rock into bread. Well, of course, Jesus didn't, didn't buy it. He resisted and re, he rebuked the devil by quoting scripture, Deuteronomy 8, 3. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God, right? So that's what we need to do. Um, Jesus, in, in reading, this was so interesting. Jesus was all about his father's will, period. In John 4, 34, Jesus says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. All right, the second reason was so that he could sympathize with us when we go through these kind of temptations and struggles and hunger for whatever it might be, be it food or love or companionship or whatever. Hebrews 2, 18 says, Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help us when we're being tempted. Okay, so we can go to him. He knows what you're feeling. Okay, he went through it all. You think of the different temptations he went through in the wilderness. It wasn't just hunger. Okay, another reason he was there was to give us an example to follow. Jesus wasn't tested to see if he was going to fail. We know that's not going to happen, right? So he was tempted to demonstrate how we as humans need to handle temptations or... Um, when sin comes up, how to handle that. And you see how he did that, by the word of God. We need to stay in it. Through Christ's power, we, can, we too can overcome sin and temptation. The word of God is our best and only defense against Satan's schemes. At the same time, one of the commentaries said that Jesus was affirming his mission as the Messiah. He submissively entrusted himself to the Father's plan rather than forcefully paving his own way, meeting his own needs. Because you know when he's tempted, he could have to, to turn that rock into bread, right? But that wasn't the plan. He was sticking to the plan. Okay? And the last thing I'm going to hang on for a minute is to, it was preparing him for ministry. 
The temptation, one of the commentaries said, was Jesus' own personal discipline, and that was of obedience. Um, I think, kind of like in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was going here to say, Dad, you know what's coming. Half of these people aren't going to believe me. Half of my closest friends are going to betray me um, and, and deny me. You know, I just, like at Gethsemane, I don't want to do this, but if it's your will, I will. It's interesting in Hebrews 5, 7 through 9, it says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was God's son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And being perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who believe in him. So I do, I think he was going saying, you know, we both know what's coming. I don't, I don't really want to go through this. Can't we just do it another way? But I get it. If this is your will, your will be done. I'm going to do it. We've talked about 40 days before too. And talking about probation, the word or the number 40 in the Bible has talked about tribulation, testing, trials, judgment, in this case, probation. God allows us to go through these things in order for us to grow spiritually if we will take those opportunities to do that. He wants us to rely on him, solely on him and his word. Um, I think the number 42, for us, you think of the flood or the 40 years in the wilderness, how long 40 days and 40 nights seems, right? I think it might be telling us that God is going to be patient with you until you get it, right? And that sometimes our spiritual maturity takes a little bit of time. Sometimes we just don't get it. And I think a lot of times that's why we go through the trials we go through over and over and over because he's saying, you didn't get it right again. I'm going to have to, you know, we're going to have to go through this one more time. So, um, so anyway, just to kind of conclude, I think we need to use this time of Lent just to take time and maybe go to a quiet place and reflect on God's word. Pray. Maybe if you haven't before, try fasting. I, I know they say, you know, when you start getting hungry, that's when you pray. That's when you depend on him to get you through that little tummy growling, right? See where God's working in your life. See where he's wanting to strengthen you and where he wants to use you. I know a lot of us are like, oh, well, I'm just so tired or, you know, I've done my time. or You're still breathing, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think all of us could probably use to brush up on our Christian skills, praying, studying, memorizing scripture, and getting involved. Keep coming to church. I know it's so easy now with everything online to just stay in our pajamas and watch. But we need to be here. We can't love on you and pray for you and know what's going on in your life if we don't, if we don't see you and we can't love on you, right? So um, I just I don't know what season of life you guys are in or what new direction or what new ministry God's calling you to do. But just keep in mind that he doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called.